thank you for joining us again for uh, praying through the Psalms. And today we're doing something a little different because we have the great privilege of having Dr. Matthew Thomas with us. And I know the Psalms have been very uh, pivotal in his life, very crucial in his life. And uh, we want to hear from him. We want to hear his heart. And I want you to get a new burden to be praying for uh, Dr. Matthew Thomas and his wife, Elizabeth. Uh, so we're going to have an interview today rather than our normal feature of, of praying through the Psalms. So thank you, Dr. Thomas, for being with us and My pleasure. willing to share with us. Uh, Psalm 102, verse 28, is a promise that we have that the children of the righteous will dwell secure and their children will be established in the Lord. And I know your dad and mom were godly. Uh, a godly man, a godly woman, they felt the call of God to minister to India and almost like missionaries to their own country as it were. God did phenomenal things o over the course of their life and yet there were many times th that it was just them in prayer. That's all they had was just the prayer to God and their faith in God and each other and you grew up in that. Yes. Sir. Uh, could you tell us what your early devotional life as a family was like? How did you guys have devotions as a family? My dad and mom set the guidelines to start the day in prayer, in devotion. We could not give any excuse. Five o'clock in the morning, we have to get up. Five boys, one girl will get up and go to their bedroom. I may say, Dad, I have an exam tomorrow. No excuse. You start your day in prayer in devotion in family where we will have two or three songs in Indian language and then we all will read the scripture together and then we will pray we all have to pray and then dad or mom will close this prayer session from the very beginning he taught us Psalm 25 verse 1 unto thee O Lord do I lift up my soul early morning I will seek you so he taught us, seek God first, put God first, everything will be okay, everything will be okay. So I thank God for godly parents who put the devotion. We have to read the Bible, oh, and we have to read after family devotion, we all have to go to our room, read the Bible, then only we will have breakfast. You cannot have breakfast. <laughs> My mom was tough, very tough, she disciplined all of us. So yes, we'll read, you know, being a young kid, you know, nine year, I wanted to do my own way sometime. I want to eat first because we didn't have that much food and we have six people to eat, you know. Someone can get more and I will not get it. So I want to be the first to go to the dining table, eat. So one day I rushed from the family prayer, went to the room and read Psalm and came back. I said, mom, I'm ready to eat. She said, what did you read? I said, Psalm 117. Oh, you're getting smarter now. Do one thing. I will have breakfast for you. But tomorrow, you must go and read Psalm 119. I got the lesson right there. Yeah. So I'm telling you, they put from the very beginning the Word of God. We have kept that Word inside us, not in the mind, but in the heart. Because Dad taught us, if you keep that Word inside you, He will keep you from all sin and the lust and temptation. And, and you uh, were consistent. This was every day. Every day. And no matter what was going on, exams at school, you, you had those devotions without exception every day. And I'm sure that when God took your dad on trips, he came over to America, preached different places, your mom would carry that. You, would have, yes. you wouldn't miss a day. We will not miss a day. And even if dad mom is gone, we have to do that thing. Yeah, yeah. And they were a small house, but we all will come to one place pray together and seek God for the blessing for that day. I thank God. Thank God they put the love for His Word. And still we do now, after so many years, still we read the Bible. I'd rather read the Bible than to listen to someone or go to a conference. I want to learn this Bible, apply it. I believe it. The only one thing we made the change, which is through my dad, take one scripture or you call verse of the day and meditate whole day and see what God will speak to you.
through that one verse of the Bible and we have been blessed. We have been blessed. We are teaching our children and our grandchildren the same thing. They cannot, they cannot even start the car. My wife will not allow my daughter or son-in-law to start the car unless they pray. Unless they pray. Unless they pray. Now, you have seen the, the reality of the scripture in Psalm 37. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Now, your mom and dad were righteous, you are their seed, and you've seen God's provision. Yes. Can you think of some answers to prayer out of those devotional times about God's provision? Yeah, I remember one time there was no food in our house, and my older brother was maybe 13, I was 11, and dad said, pray, God will provide. Just think, no credit card, no bakery like you have here in America, we didn't have bakery, nothing. He said, just pray. We prayed a few minutes, no breakfast. Lunchtime, we went to dad, dad, we are hungry. He said, pray. Dinner, no dinner. He said, he said pray. God has his own way and timing. Around midnight, young man comes and knocks our door, Tiffin in his hand. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all three meals together we had at Amen. midnight. Midnight in our life had the miracle. Thank God for that. Amen. So that consistency of prayer was built into you, then into your children, now into your grandchildren. But not only that, God had put it on your heart to care for other children there in India. There are many who don't have enough food or they're, 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 they're in an adverse circumstance. And God put it on your heart to minister to the children of India. Tell us about that. Yes, when I took over the ministry in 92, we walked in the streets of Itarsi and I saw many kids begging, leading from garbage can. Broke my heart. I said, I must do something. I said, Lord, give me an idea what to do an idea came to start a place for helpless and hopeless children we took them we are feeding them three meals a day providing clothes providing education everything is we are doing now god has been good we are seeing the results one of the boy from the orphanage is in medical college now second year 14 years ago he came I, and then these boys and girls are memorizing the scriptures I'm talking there was a pastor who came and he announced that he'll be teaching book of James he announced on Sunday morning by Tuesday morning my boys have memorized book of James the teacher could not believe he is going to teach, but he didn't know all the scripture. And this boy has memorized. Another boy has memorized Psalm 119. Another boy has memorized Ephesians, all six chapters, without any mistake. They are memorizing the scripture because we know one day, Bible will be taken away from our hands in India. But no one can take the scripture which is in the heart. Amen. Thank God we have put the word of god into their hearts amen i was i was there with a couple other pastors one day when uh, a couple of young men were going through uh, reciting by memory psalm 119 the other guys were following along in their bibles i i wanted to watch the kids but they didn't miss a word they up in the king james they didn't miss a single word so god intervened and provided everything you needed and i'm sure you've seen in the orphanage many times many times how, how is COVID and here you have all these kids and, and COVID hits. How did God come through? Were there any miracles of provision during the COVID time? Many miracles, not just the only provision, but miracles of God. Thousands and thousands of people died in my town. 29 people died in my own church. But all the boys and girls of the orphanage and Bible college, seminary, no one got sick. They all were in one campus. We had to put them in one campus for 11 months. They were locked in. I thank God. I thank God for God's protection and the provision. Oh, I'm talking, there was no food. 
One day, warden called me and said, there is no food in the orphanage. I said, pray. Take all the girl boys in the room and pray. Uh, while they were praying, a truckload of 400 pounds of rice was delivered. God has been good. God Amen. who provided for George Mueller is providing for us in a tarsi. I thank God. Amen. I thank God. God. God is so true to his word, isn't he? Um, what would you say is your vision for the next, say, three to five years? What, what has God put on your heart that we can be praying for you about concerning the work God's called you to do? Yeah, we have planted more than 1,900 churches. I cannot expect to thin. I'm in 74 now. My desire for the next three to five years to raise 25 key leaders. I will download 25 hours of my experiences and the Word of God. And they have to go and teach 25 leaders under them within two years time. So what will happen? We'll raise strong leaders who love the word of God. So I, that is my goal, number one. Number two is to have my successor ready to take over the ministry. So believers, friends, I need you to pray that God will have my successor ready next to two to three years it will happen because we are praying number three the goal for next three to five years is to have a global prayer net network they call global network of prayer means i will start in india and connect different churches and we can pray same time whatever time is good so thousand thousands of intercessors will be praying for one need two needs five needs will flash that thing on the screen so you all can join with us global prayer network amen well what you're describing there it says uh, in timothy uh, second timothy 2 2 and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Yes. So people, will we be praying? Can we, will you make a commitment to pray for Dr. Thomas and the ministry that God would raise up those 25 and that God would continue this work of discipling until it becomes hundreds, thousands, and, and on and on as the Word of God spreads, as they invest themselves and the Word into the lives of people, both children and uh, other men that God is raising up. Well, that's, that's quite a vision. Uh, how about personally for you and, and your dear wife, Elizabeth, how can we be praying for you? Uh, for both of us, we need divine help. I believe in divine healing, but I also believe in divine help. We both have to walk in divine help every day not just during covid but every day we want to walk in divine health we want divine protection and divine provision amen. and god is going to do it so please pray for us amen we need that that powerful prayer i believe prayer has power i have seen i'm christian for 67 years and i've seen that power in prayer amen now psalm 91 became almost like a weapon uh, spiritually for you and a wall of protection. How did you use Psalm 91 throughout COVID? Do you know that when Pastor Mark, you came in our conference, you took Psalm 91 and gave four walls of protection. Wall of blood of Jesus Christ, wall of the angels, wall of the name of Lord Jesus Christ, and the blood of Christ. So we took that psalm during COVID-19 and we have not stopped that thing. It's almost 19 months. Every morning, every evening, when Elizabeth and I, we pray, we take Psalm 91. That is our prayer before we read summer passages. 91 has become great, great inspiration for us. We say, Lord, no sickness, no virus, no disaster, no difficulty, no danger will come close to our dwelling. And God has shown that scripture in our life. Amen. You know, uh, Dr. Thomas, when I think of you and, and your wife Elizabeth, as well as your dad and your mom, one thought comes to my mind. When I look at these people and I think of these people, here's the thought that comes. God's word is true. Yes. 
they embrace God's Word, they live God's Word, they confess and meditate on God's Word, and they see the reality of God's Word coming to pass. As the Bible said, uh, their children are now being established in the Lord. Uh, their children are not begging for bread. This is all the Word of God. Uh, their children will be blessed after them as they walk in integrity, as Proverbs 20 says. So they are taking the Word of God, living it, and seeing it come to pass. Yes. God's Word is true, and that consistency of prayer. Well, let's close our time by praying together. And I want to challenge you that are watching to make a commitment to every day pray for Pastor Thomas, Matthew Thomas, and his wife Elizabeth, the Word of God to come forth out of their mouth powerfully, the vision that he spoke of to come to pass, the divine health and protection and provision to continue. So would you make that commitment? They're committed to go and be there and do what they're doing. Will you be committed to pray for them? So let's pray right now. Father, thank I you thank Lord. you so much thank for Dr. Lord. Thomas thank you, Lord. and Elizabeth. I thank Lord. you for the heritage they've received and now are passing on. And we're seeing an, an explosion, a multiplication, and, and beyond that, in terms of the Word of God growing and spreading and lives being impacted. So, Lord, give them that divine health, that divine protection, that divine provision. Raise up the people that you are calling and raising up and give them favor. And continue to bless those children as they grow into men and women of God. And we thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, 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 amen.